What's going on guys? This is Empty Box. And let's go ahead and uh, jump into setups for sim racing. Just going to go ahead and throw this up front. I'm not a car setup guru. I'm not a car suspension geometry expert or anything like that. And I'm not going to claim to be. My goal with this series of videos is not to turn you into a super serious eSport expert who knows everything about car setup within sim racing. Nor to give you all of the speed secrets out there for every last racing sim on the face of the planet. My goal is to explain why certain things are on the cars and what they're doing because when you understand why they're there, what they're there for, you understand when you need to change them. I'm going to go ahead and take things section by section. I'm going to be doing this in different episodes so you can find a playlist with all these put together. I'm doing this because it's more effective for me, more efficient for me to put these videos together one segment at a time. As well as for you guys, it makes it easier reference rather than trying to cram everything into one like 35-40 minute long video. I do have things kind of mapped out. I'm going to start with suspension settings here in this video. Then we'll go on to alignment and tires in the next video. Then we'll go into the drivetrain. Then we'll go into aerodynamics. Then we'll talk about at a little bit greater length why you would change certain things when you need to change them. So let's go ahead and begin by talking about suspension settings. Now highlighted on orange is the anti-roll bar, or if you're an American, at least you may be more familiar with the term sway bar, they are one and the same. Now this is a very easy place to start because it does literally exactly what it's named after. It is a bar that is very anti-roll. I mean, it literally does exactly what it's named for. Now how this works is as you go through a corner, the car is naturally going to roll to the outside of the corner. You're going to get that body roll. Suspension on the outside corner is essentially going to be compressing, therefore moving upwards, whereas the suspension on the inside corner is going to be trying to extend. It's going to be moving downwards. Now as the anti-roll bar is directly connected to both sides of the car, the anti-roll bar is essentially fighting against itself and therefore is providing that resistance to roll. Now because of the way this works and that the car essentially has to be rolling, the anti-roll bar really is going to do absolutely nothing until you get into the corner. That's why typically the anti-roll bar is something that you adjust for car handling in the middle of the corner rather than on entry or exit. You will most typically be adjusting the stiffness of the bar itself directly, uh, although sometimes, especially within the case of iRacing, you will have the ability to change the material that the bar is made out of, which is also controlling its stiffness, but in a different direction rather than just bar thickness itself. Now, it's also worth mentioning that several more modern cars will have the ability to adjust the blades, which these are kind of sort of a replacement for the end links, which are the vertical pieces running from uh, down by the tire up towards the anti-roll bar itself and essentially by rotating which direction this blade is pointing it slightly alters the stiffness of the anti-roll bar as a whole. This is how you know indie cars for example have onboard roll bar adjustments they're simply rotating the angle of the blade to effectively change the stiffness of the bar. Now highlighted in blue are the springs. They're the springy looking bits. The springs are what can be thought of as carrying the car's weight. Without the springs the car would just bottom out to its maximum suspension travel and that would basically be that. Now as such, a stiffer spring may allow you to run a lower ride height which may be beneficial. However, at the same time when you run a stiffer spring, the car is less capable of soaking and absorbing bumps as a whole which may actually make things a bit slower to drive in the end. In general, it's said that softer springs provide, again, in general, better mechanical grip, slower speed corners, the car will perform better, whereas stiffer springs are better when you get to higher speed corners and when you start to get aerodynamics involved, which we will not go ahead and discuss in this video at all. I personally consider springs a major change. If you're looking for something to make a substantial effect in most cars, especially in road course racing, where you don't have nearly as many spring options as you will on an oval, this is something that's going to be a major change to the car as a whole. And when you're changing spring rate, you're essentially adjusting how stiff the spring is. We've now swung around the corner to in front of the rear tires, just so that way we can also see this adjustment, now highlighted in green, the spring perch offset or ride height adjustments. Pretty much every racing sim out there will allow you to change the ride height directly with the exception of iRacing. iRacing uses spring perch offset, which is how ride height would actually be changed in cars with this type of relatively basic suspension setup. Essentially by changing the position of the spring perch or the shock collar as you might be more familiar in oval racing, 
you're changing how much spring is available for usage as well as changing the ride height at the same time. The general rule of thumb is you're going to want to run the car as low as you possibly can without causing the car to bottom out excessively. There are some instances where you're just going to bottom out regardless, especially like at the bottom of a hill, as well as you also have to have enough suspension travel left for the car to be able to absorb the bumps. When you go ahead and lower the car, you're removing suspension travel from the car, which means that the suspension is less likely to be able to do its job if there are supreme amounts of bumps out there. And just a little tip for you guys out there who aren't going to go into telemetry because most of us honestly aren't, a good way to check if your car is bottoming out excessively is just to look at the replay and see if you're shooting sparks out the back end because that's generally a pretty good telltale sign. Now let's go ahead and circle around back again to the dampers, now highlighted in red. And if you're an American, you may have also heard these referred to as shocks or shock absorbers. They are the same thing. And once again, surprise, surprise, the things are named as to the things that they do. The dampers dampen things. The shock absorbers absorb shock. The way I like to think about these things in terms of making them as straightforward as I possibly can is the dampers are there to help control the spring. Compress spring has a tremendous amount of energy stored up inside of it. And if you were to go ahead and just allow that spring to uncompress in an instant, bad things happen. That's a lot of energy that gets released very quickly, and that means that you're probably going to end up poking an eye out or worse. I'm sure there's many mechanics down in the comment section right now talking about how springs going sproing is is a thing. When you're adjusting the dampers, you're adjusting the reaction to an initial force. Now this works in two ways. There is bump adjustments, which is essentially how much resistance the damper will exert in terms of compressing, as well as the rebound stiffness, which is how much resistance it's going to have to extending. The general rule of thumb is that on a bumpier track, you're going to want to run a softer or less damp setup, less stiff dampers, because that allows the suspension to move more freely. It's not fighting against itself, and therefore you can actually keep the tires in contact with the road better. Uh, whereas alternatively, on a smoother track, you might want to run stiffer dampers overall as a whole. As you should be able to guess by now at this point in the video, the dampers are kind of sort of the fine tuners. The springs are going to be the big adjustment to get you in the ballpark. The dampers are going to be what puts you right there perfectly in tune. You'll most notice the effect of your damper tuning on things such as bumps and the way cars react to them, as well as going into the corner and out of the corner, switching, changing directions. Dampers will become most noticeable in those types of transient maneuvers. And then it gets even better because more modern cars, more advanced cars, feature even more adjustable dampers and they will often have low speed adjustments and high speed adjustments for both bump and rebound. It's important to know that this does not refer to the speed that the car is traveling. What this is referring to is the speed of the shaft within the damper. Essentially your low speed adjustments are going to be more useful in tuning those transient behaviors like when the car is loading up going into the corner or how it performs over smaller little bumps. Whereas your high speed adjustments are gonna be more useful for larger, more aggressive bumps or larger, more aggressive curb strikes when you're jumping curbs and doing all sorts of fun like that. There are two more things I'd like to go ahead and talk about in this video, although unfortunately they are more difficult to showcase. Those being bump stops and packers. Fortunately, they both serve the exact same purpose, and that is to limit the amount of suspension compression available. These really only come into play when the car is bottoming out, or alternatively, when you must run a super low ride height, but you can't allow the car to bottom out. For example, if this is Formula One and you're running the wood plank rule. So that will do it for this video on the suspension uh, options that you're likely to encounter in sim racing. Hopefully now you're better equipped to go ahead and jump into the garage screen and start changing these settings with confidence, having a better understanding of what you're actually changing and why you should be changing that when you should be changing it. One last request, as these videos do take longer to make than the ones that I usually do, uh, please go ahead and leave a thumbs up if you found this video useful, enjoyable, or something like that. Uh, as well as if you're new around here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because there will be future videos on this topic as we cover the rest of the car as well as other sim racing related content. So anyways, I think that's going to do it for this one. Tires, alignment, you're next. Hope you guys enjoyed. Right, bye.